Hi guys and welcome to this Excel tutorial. Here we're going to get back into formulas and I'm going to show you two ways to make dynamic formulas. And I'm going to show you one that is really easy to use and then one that is a bit more interesting and maybe well suited for data sets that don't look just like this. So it could be a bit more versatile but requires a bit more work. And I know there are only about a million different ways to make dynamic formulas in Excel. So if you've got a favorite way for making a formula dynamic, please put it in the comment below and I'd love to see what you got. And after that, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and the little bell icon so you can get all of my new tutorials. Now let's get into selling some replicants and making some formulas. So what we are going to do here is to make a nice dynamic subtotal formula. You see right now it's hard coded and that can update if we add rows in the middle of it, but we wanna make it even more dynamic. We always want it to apply to this column and everything in it no matter what. So let's go with the easy way to get this going. We are going to select the data that we care about and then hit Control T or go to Insert and Table. And make sure my table has headers is checked in, it has selected the correct data set. If you have data adjacent to what you're going to make a table, it's very important to make sure that the correct area has been selected. And then hit OK. And now we have a table. But maybe you don't like how this looks. So let's get that out of here. Click in the table. Go to Table Design. Drop down arrow. And upper left. And then go to the filter button option right here and uncheck that. And now it looks almost exactly like it did just a moment ago, except for we have so much more power. But before we make the formula, let's go back to table design and rename this guy. A little tip, name your tables first with the prefix TBL. And we're gonna call this guy TBL invoice. And now whenever we are making our formulas in Excel, it's very easy to reference them. Just type TBL and we get a list of all of our tables. Now let's go ahead and make this formula. All right. We go equals sum and type TBL. We see all of our tables there, just one of them, double click. Then do an open bracket and we get a list of all the columns. Double click total, then close that guy up with another bracket and close it up again and hit enter, and our formula is complete. And when we add and remove rows from this table, it's going to automatically update. Now, the way I just showed you how to make that is great when your table isn't on the same worksheet, but if it's on the same worksheet, just go like this and select the column and it will fill it in for you. And hit enter, and you have your lovely dynamic formula. And that's a structured reference for tables. It is a really, really great feature and a reason why you're going to want to use tables when you're making dynamic formulas like this. It makes your life so much easier. But now let's go to the more interesting way to make a dynamic formula. And here we are going to add named ranges into the mix. And like I said, there are only about a million different ways to make dynamic formulas. So this is by no means meant to be the end all and be all what I'm going to show you here. So let's say that you have a data set and it might not be structured like a table like this. And you know the very top of it and you know the very bottom of it. And the bottom of it is always going to be a particular cell. Even if that range expands or contracts, you know that you're going to have one cell below that that's always going to remain intact. In this case, we have a subtotal cell. If I add rows or remove rows from here, the subtotal cell is still going to remain beneath the data set. So what we can do is to name this cell right here and then use that to get a row reference and then build a dynamic range from that. And we can do the same with the header. So click a cell in the header and let's go up here and type header row, enter, and go down here and type subtotal row enter and for our formula let's zoom in just a little bit and move it over we are going to go equals some open parentheses and we use the wonderful indirect function it's going to allow us to build a range reference and then feed it back to the sum function correctly so it will actually work so right now we want to build a range reference e14 to E17. 
We already know the column, that's not going to change, so do E within quotation marks. And we need to get a row reference, so type row. But how do we get the row? Well, we know what the header is, so we can reference the header row. It's a single cell, it's going to give us a row number. But that header is a one row above our data set. So we can close it up and then add a one to push the row reference down one into the data set. And now we have the first part of the range reference, which here will be E14. And we need to finish building out the rest of it. So concatenate that with the colon and E for column E. And then let's get the bottom row. So row, subtotal row. And this time we are one below the data set. So we need to subtract one to get it up into the data set. So minus one. And then we close up the indirect and close up the sum. Hit enter, and there we go. Now when you're building a formula like this, what you can do to double check is to select everything inside of the indirect function and hit F9. And it's going to show you what it's going to feed the next function. So it's going to give the sum function E14 to E17. And that's perfect, E14 right here to E17. Another neat way to verify that your indirect functions are working correctly is click the cell with the indirect function, go to formulas, and evaluate formula. And we can zoom in and watch this guy getting built. When I click evaluate, it will build it step by step. So we have the header row, then plus one for 14, then E14, and so on until it builds the complete reference. And then feeds it back to sum and then some evaluates it for the final result. Now, that's all I'm gonna show you in this tutorial. And now you may be saying, why would I ever use this second method? The first one was so, so much easier. And it really is a lot easier. But there are many situations where you are not able or allowed to turn a data set into an actual table. And that's when you're going to want to use these more complex methods. But regardless of the formulas that you make, I hope you can see here how you can use named ranges to make rather interesting and more powerful formulas and functions in Excel. Now, I want to see how you like to make your dynamic references, because as I keep saying, there are only a million different ways to do it. So even if your data set is not set up like a table like this, what are some of the ways that you like to use to make your dynamic references? Go ahead and put them in the comments below and let's see if we can learn something new. And if you liked this video, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you can get all of my new tutorials.